Okay, so I'm going to start with a show of hands. How many of you say that all the time or how many of you have said that at some point of time in your lives? That's practically everybody. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. My love of travel and also possibly your love of travel and all those travel dreams lying there unfulfilled. Because this I love to travel always comes with a dot, dot, dot. I love to travel but so, I'm a travel writer, I'm a travel blogger, and of course, I'm a traveler by definition. I'm out of my house for anywhere between 7 to 10 days in a month. I have a travel blog called Itchy Feet that kind of sums up the condition that I suffer from if I stay on at home for too long. So, I have been to 20 states in India and about 25 countries abroad, and a lot of it has been a journey, a journey of learning for me. I want to share with you a few tips and little things that I've picked up along the way just to show you how you can actually travel. You know, why you don't need to quanti qualify that statement saying, I love to travel, but a lot of it might be very simple, very intuitive, but I hope that my experience will help you pick up a few things. So, in the course of this talk, I've used photographs from my own travels. The idea is to motivate you hopefully, so that by the time I finish, you have the motivation to get up and go somewhere. Obviously not go right away because there are a lot of speeches to come, but I want you all perhaps this weekend or the next weekend to be up and about. So what does travel mean to you? I know travel has different meanings for different people. What does travel mean to you? Just a few quick words. Anything? What does travel mean? What, what, Adventure, great. Meeting new people. Meeting new people, absolutely. Freedom, unwind your Serena. Freedom, unwind yourself, excellent. Nature discovering. Sorry? Discovering, discovering absolutely. Nature. Nature. Discovering. Journeys. Unknowns. Unknowns, absolutely. Food. Okay, so all of this I've actually talked about. So for some people, possibly like Urvashi, travel is being out on the open road. It's what I have called the song of the open road. It's just that sense of freedom, you know, feeling the wind on your cheeks, leaving the traffic, the noise, the pollution behind and just being on your own. For some people like me, for instance, it's about new people, meeting new culture, you know, getting insights into new cultures, meeting new people, seeing the way they live. For some people, travel is a checklist. Oh, I'm going to Turkey. I have to see this, 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 this and this, tick, tick, tick. That's what travel means. For some people, it means food. Some people, it's all about art and culture, about adventure, for instance. It might not just be adventure in terms of finding new things, but actual adventure activities. You know, people who go out constantly on treks and mountaineering and bungee jumping and skydiving and so on. I have friends who travel exclusively for wildlife. They spend entire winters in Ladakh just waiting for the snow leopard to emerge. They go to Sri Lanka. But they don't go to the beaches, they don't go to the Buddhist circuit, they head straight to Yala, to the national park, to see the local wildlife there. And for some people, it's about the natural wonders and splendors of the earth. And finally, increasingly, worryingly, there's this bunch of people for whom travel is all about photography. I say worryingly, because I'm a photographer myself, but I say worryingly because people, a lot of people have now stopped seeing the world through their eyes, they're seeing the world through their lenses. And I think we are missing out a lot by doing that. But my basic point is that travel means different things to different people. It's not just about getting up from here and going somewhere. So, can you tell me your travel wish list? Do you have one destination that you want to see in your life? I know somebody here wants to go shopping in Paris. Paris? What did you say? Anybody? Do you have one dream destination? Wall Street. Valley of Flowers. Wall Street. Wall Street. Like, are you a finance student? Here? <laughs> <Yeah? laughs> okay. Anything else? Bora Bora Islands. Prague. Great. Run of Kutch. Hollywood. Hollywood. Hagia Sophia. In fact, there was a photo if you uh, saw that. The road of bones. Okay, I'm going to talk to you about that later and find out about it. <laughs> That's probably somewhere I'd like to go as well. Amazon. Excellent. So what stops you from traveling? 
Bring on your excuses. I know your excuses. I've listed them down. But I just want to hear it from you. Money. The big daddy of all excuses. Money. Time. That's another big daddy, by the way. Oh, lots of excuses. If Can you read that out? Take a moment to read that out because I'm going to tell you why I think travel is exactly like that. So, travel like a diet is on our minds pretty much all the time. If not all the time, all of us think about it, especially after that gulab jamun at lunch, I'm sure a lot of you are now thinking about it. So, it's something that we think about all the time. And again, like a diet, today is never a good day to start. There's always, you know, next Monday, after I finish this cake, you know, I have my cousin's wedding coming up where I'm going to anyway binge. Maybe I will start it in summer, it's too cold to exercise now. So there's never a good time, there's always a next Monday as far as travel is concerned. But believe me, the going can be tough. Again, like a diet, the starting can be tough, the going can be tough, but the end results are so worth it. First excuse, I can't travel alone. How will I go alone? I don't have friends who have the same interests. Nobody wants to come with me. How will I go alone? So, I recently read a newspaper report which said that one third of Australians, all Australians plan to travel solo in 2015. And a third of Britons already do. So, solo traveling is emerging in a really big way and I encourage you to embrace that. Because solo travel means that you are on your own. You can be as social or as asocial as you want to be. You want to sit in a cafe, have coffee and read a book all day, entirely up to you. If you want to spend your entire travel you know, browsing around museums, it's entirely up to you. When you're traveling with somebody, you're constantly fighting for that middle ground. You know, something that suits both your interests, both your moods and so on. That's one great thing about solo travel. You really don't have to think about what the other person wants to do. The other thing I think is uh, that solo travel does for you, it's just very liberating. Like again, I'm quoting Urvashi, that whole thing about finding yourself in the middle of nowhere. It happens in the weirdest of places that you're just sitting and there's this moment of epiphany. Okay. Or it could just be that when you travel alone, you meet a lot more people. Un unlike when you're traveling with somebody because your focus is all on that person or that, that group of people that you're traveling with. So, I have had great fun traveling alone. Of course, I stay safe and I make sure that I don't go around telling everybody my travel plans. But this is something that I encourage you all to do at some point of time in your lives. Next, I have no time. It's become such a fashion to say, oh my God, I'm so busy. All, it's, a lot of people wear it as a badge of pride. I have enough friends who say, you know, I've not been on a holiday in the last two years. What's there to be proud of, really? Or, uh, you know, I had leave, but I was so busy at work that I actually didn't take that leave and go anywhere. Uh, sorry, dude, you're not getting any sympathy from me. But, but they don't know that, of course. So they say it to me and they get a year full in return. So, so it's, the time is out there. It's about how you make your time work for you. So one of the things that I have done is, I, the first thing that I do during a new year, for instance, is look at the list of ho long holidays. It's one of my favorite things. And I pick up my husband's official calendar list also. So I can start planning long weekends. Because... Uh, we all end up thinking of travel as a long winded thing, you know, I need 10 days to go, I need one week to go, but it, it can be a quick weekday, weekend thing, it can be a day trip, it can be as long as you want it to be. So one of the things is to look at long weekends, combine it with work trips maybe. In another avatar, earlier avatar, I used to be a market research consultant, which meant that I used to travel quite a lot. That's possibly where I started, why I got this love for travel because I used to always stay on for a couple of days if I went to a new place and explore on my own. And the other thing about making uh, about time is it works if you have short term and long term goals. You know, short term being I will travel this weekend or I will travel this summer and a long term goal which could be something that's, you know, something that you can work towards. Uh, I want to go see wildebeest migration in Kenya. Or I want to go see the cherry blossom in Japan. Or I want to see, go see the northern lights in Scandinavia. It could be a once in a lifetime thing. Not the kind of thing that you would do again and again. But it's important to have, I think, short term and long term goals. And the money. I don't have money. So, so much to see. So little money. 
is everybody's reality. Okay? And like I said about time, there is no reason why you can't make money also work for you. Uh, when I was in the stu a student in the UK a very long time ago, I spent half my time thinking about how broke I was. I, that I couldn't travel to Europe. I was so blinded by the fact that I couldn't travel to Europe that I didn't realize that I was living in one of the most beautiful countries on earth. So, I discovered the super bus system and come Friday or Saturday, I used to get onto a bus and go somewhere. And the other thing that I did to save money was stay in hostels or bed and breakfast places. It's a habit that stayed with me till now, maybe not the hostels, I've grow, outgrown that. But bed and breakfast places, smaller guest houses as compared to fancy hotels. Because it's not just about saving money. When you stay at these places, you also get to interact a lot with other travelers. And you get a lot of inside secrets from your host. Because there are places that only locals will know of. To eat, to shop and things to do that you will never know as an outsider. So, this is a way to make money work for you. Look, if, look for deals, look for you know low, low cost carrier deals. Take buses instead of flights. Stay at bed and breakfast or couch surfing. How many of you have heard of couch surfing? Would you try that ever? It's a fantastically safe and zero cost option to, 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 to for stay. So money is all about you know making money work for you. Then there are cheap destinations definitely you know cheaper destinations like Thailand or Nepal or Sri Lanka where you can start with. So one of the things that I did was uh, when we went to Egypt, it was just at the end of the, fir the first revolution. Of course, no one knew then that there was another revolution to come. So, we got extremely cheap flights and we decided to go. And our friends thought we were pretty mad to go at a time like that. Actually, it was a mad thing to do. But as it turned out, it worked very well for us because the entire country was empty. And they were welcoming tourists with open arms. You know, a country where otherwise people harass tourists and the, there's so many touts and you hear so many horror stories. We had people who went out of the way to welcome us because that was a time when country needed tourists and, I, and we ended up having a really cheap, fantastic tour. Inertia. Now going back to my diet thing about inertia. Again, we all like to tra plan travel. We all like to dream about going, you know, going someday. Going. For instance, my husband keeps talking about going on that trek. He's still going. It's been about six months now. So there's just no way to get out of inertia except to get up and go. So the way I work around it is I stay extremely focused on where I want to go. I read so much about it and I make sure that I'm inundated with material about it that it's on my mind all the time and I don't stop till I go there. I'm not, I'm not saying it's some kind of magical thing, you know, believe and you will go or dream and you will go. I'm just saying that inertia is something very, very real for all of us. It's something that we fight because the process of travel itself is so difficult to organize and manage and, you know, you'd rather be in the comfort of home. So the one thing to do is to stay motivated, read books, travel blogs, travel magazines, movies. How many of you have seen PK? Did anybody notice the place where the first few scenes were shot? Not Venice. Belgium. Belgium, yes. So it was a place called Bruges. So, you know, that's that's the kind of thing that is motivating. When you look at a new place on screen and you say, Oh my god, that place looks so beautiful, I want to go there someday. And I've done that. It works really, really effectively. And the other thing that I think will work in case of travel inertia is focus on that aspect of travel which you find most rewarding. You know, it could be uh, I will go to Thailand and eat grasshoppers or I could be I will go to Australia and do skydiving or it could be I will go to Vienna and listen to the opera because as we saw earlier different people have different travel interests. So I think what really is motivating to focus on one aspect of travel that you find personally most rewarding and I think it really works. That's the uncertainty of it all. You know, how do I apply for a visa? What documents do I need? Uh, what if they don't speak my language? What if I don't like the food? What if people out there cheat me? There's no way to know. Absolutely no way to know unless you go out and try it. And really people are not so different. People are very similar once you, 
you know, get past that initial language and food barrier. So I think you should just go out and embrace that uncertainty. Uh, one thing I suggest is if you're not comfortable with going to an entirely new place, to start with, you know, the, there are those same, same but different kind of places like Nepal, for instance, or Sri Lanka, for instance, or everything in your backyard. How, I mean, how many of us have really seen everything that Karnataka has to offer, for instance? Or go with a tour group. I don't mean the kind of tour groups which would take you large buses and, you know, show you sites from a distance. I mean, common interest groups, for instance, photography groups, or women travelers, or trekker groups. Start with that and sl slowly ease into travel. This is the last, one of the last things, which is commitments. All of us have commitments. I mean, he has literally a burden on his shoulders, but many of us have these not so literal burdens. You know, money, money we discussed, uh, family, children, other commitments. How do I leave them behind? So, I want to tell you the story of a man as we saw in Cambodia. He had lost both his legs. So, in Siem Reap, in the Angkor Wat temples, the temples are almost vertical. Climbing up lit means literally crawling up, which any of us would find difficult. He had lost both his legs, he had a helper, he had two crutches and we saw him through the day in temple after temple making it and we just thought if he can do it, why can't the rest of us, what is stopping us? This is one thing that I do all the time, oh my god you are so lucky because I do that for a living, I travel for a living. But I didn't start out. When I was young, travel, vacations mean, meant going to my grandparents' house. I don't think we went anywhere beyond that. It was just one of those to and fro things. I didn't travel abroad till I was 26, ripe old age of 26. And uh, it's just something that I grew into. I have been lucky to the extent that I've made my passion my profession. Why should you travel? Now, I am going to quickly tell you a little bit about what travel has given me because I have given you a few tips about how I think you can make travel work for you. This is a beautiful quote by uh, writer Pico Iyer. That I think he said it in a TED talk at uh, Vienna. Travel is like love, mostly because it is a heightened state of awareness in which we are mindful, receptive, undimmed by familiarity and ready to be transformed. I think trans travel above all is a transformative experience and that's something that we all need to uh, remember. A scene from Paris. So these are the few reasons why I travel. The scene from Paris. This new bride getting herself click for a portfolio. I found it fascinating. Or a scene like this where a vendor and I sat and chatted without a common language for half an hour. It reinforces my faith that people across the world are good, are friendly, are helpful. New experiences, stunning sights like this at 18,000 feet at Dongmar Lake in Sikkim where my feet was wanted to go somewhere and my brain was taking me somewhere else where I wanted to say something and I ended up saying something else. So disorienting. New adventures like in Ladakh where we were likely to get stuck at this pass. Finally, these are the experiences that I really cherish. Adventure activities which have helped me push my boundaries. It looks like I'm smiling here, but that's only because there was a camera pointed at me. I was petrified. This was a zip lining adventure in the middle of the forest, which was about 13 stations, in the middle of uh, the Midlands in South Africa, in the Drakensberg Forest, or this hot air balloon, or finally this kayaking adventure which I embarked on without knowing how to swim and almost got swept away in the Shannon. Travel has helped me push my boundaries. So finally, I want to leave you with just this quick story about Vijayan. I don't know how many of you have read this story. He's a 65-year-old tea seller who's been to 16 countries, including Britain, Austria, Switzerland, South Africa, Israel. He wants to go next to the US, and his travel plan is simple. I work. If I have to, I take a loan. I travel. I come back, work, repay the loan, and I travel again. He is a tea seller in Cochin. And if he can do it, I don't think any of us have a right to complain that we don't have the time or the money. And I finally want to leave you with this thought. I haven't been everywhere, but it's on my list. I can say it's true for me. Thank you.